is a central question with, with Aaron Rodgers here now. Obviously, there was some clashing with the old coaching staff. And what's so interesting here about the marriage between Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur, look at what guys like Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay have done. That offense is based on the quarterback playing fast. It takes responsibility off the quarterback's hands, right? It gives the protection calls to the center. It gives the quarterback less options at the line of scrimmage. Everything is based on the quarterback just going out there and playing. And we know what a big issue control has been for Aaron Rodgers. So how are they going to marry the two? That's something that I've talked to Matt about. It's something that I've talked to people in that organization about. It's something that I think is going to be a big challenge for them over the course of this first year is how do you marry a system that's based on getting quarterbacks playing fast? And that's why it's been so good for young quarterbacks like Jared Goff. How do you marry that system, that philosophy, with a guy who's always had a ton of control? And so to me, the central question remains, Colin, does Aaron Rodgers want to be coached? And then, at the, and then when you take it to the next level, it's on the coaching staff to figure out a way how to make a system that, again, has been traditionally very easy for quarterbacks to play in. How do you fit it for a quarterback who's so far evolved? I think that's one of the most fascinating stories going into 2019. If Aaron Rodgers wants to be coached, there's no question how great he can be. But that's the central question going into the season. So we cover Zeke and we cover Aaron Rodgers. I want to talk Russell Wilson for a second. He put Seattle, and I don't blame him, but he put him in kind of a pinch. Rumors started surfacing. He'll go to New York. And Seattle f had to pay him. And once Seattle had to pay him, do we have Albert's audio? All right. Can, can Albert hear me? Uh, all right. Let's just make sure Albert can hear. Audio guys, make sure he can hear. Can he hear? You're just very low. I can hear you. Uh, okay. Super, super. All, all right. right. Now I got you. Again. All right. I'll, uh, when, he, when he has me, I'll talk. I got you again. All right. Here we go. Um, I want to talk about Russell Wilson. The Seahawks yeah. had to pay him a fortune this offseason. And you can mm -hmm. tell they didn't think it was going to happen this quickly because they then had to turn four draft picks into 11. They started, yep. John Snyder started working quickly. Uh oh, we got to get inexpensive. It was a very good job by the front office of Seattle. Here's my question Do you believe there's a tad bit of resentment in this organization? that they kind of got backed into a wall with Russell Wilson a year early, had to ad lib a lot during the draft to get younger and cheaper. Do you think this is kumbaya in Seattle or not? I think everything's fine in Seattle. I think part of this, of course, is, you know, Russell Wilson looking back at his own history um, and the way he's negotiated these contracts. And there was a lot of resentment towards Russell Wilson from the previous group of players and guys that are now gone, like Cam Chancellor and Yeah, we lost him. We, you know what? Someday's audio is uh, Albert is always, it seems like, dealing with the audio demons. But he thinks it's okay. We're fine. Um, I want to shift to this. And I think this is it's something I was going to talk about next hour, but I'll bring it up. I got about four minutes. So in the NBA, I had this discussion with a friend of mine named Tim. I, I wrote a couple books, uh, and, and, and Tim Kuhn was the guy I wrote the books with. And we were laughing about this the other day, about these NBA owners. They always complain about, ah, the stars are leaving. But the franchise worth never goes down, <laughs> right? So the players may leave, but you bought the thing for $500 million, It's now worth $2 billion. Uh, You know, billionaires getting more billions. I don't lose a lot of pity. But here's the funny thing about this. We've, we've seen Kawhi leave, and we've seen players leave certain cities, and it's often smaller, less glamorous cities. And the player always gets crushed for it, right? Has anybody thought about this? If you didn't have a professional sports team, regardless of what league we're talking about, hockey, NFL, baseball, NBA, if you didn't have it by, like, 1985, you, you probably were kind of wedging you in. Did we really need the NBA in Memphis and OKC? Really? Did we really need the NFL in Jacksonville? Really? I mean, mostly we established all the cities in baseball, basketball, football. Now, don't count soccer because that's a, that's a league in its infancy. But in hockey, you know, you give me Philadelphia, you give me Pittsburgh, you give me Detroit, you give me St. Louis, you give me the cold weather northern cities. Nobody really needed Phoenix.
Now, there was nobody, nobody, hockey in the desert was not a necessity. Nothing against Phoenix. It's worked in Las Vegas for a year. Let's wait and see if Vegas is terrible for a decade. How many people in the desert go inside and watch players skate around ice? But it's a classic example. I'm reading this story today about, um, by The Athletic, theathletic.com. I'm a subscriber. About how much power Oklahoma City gave Westbrook. He was, he was, he had total power over the organization. We're not practicing today. Nobody can come in before the games and talk to us. We're not going to stay in that city an extra day. Let's fly to another city and practice. And it was the same thing LeBron got in Cleveland. And it's not a coincidence, it's not irony that Oklahoma City and Cleveland, both cities that players don't necessarily want to go to, have to acquiesce to a superstar's needs. Owners keep adding teams because they get expansion fees. It costs you like $800 million. I'm I'm throwing a number out, but I think it's like $800 million to get into hockey. Well, the owners all split that money. But there's no city that really needs the NHL right now. I'll give you an example. Major League Baseball needs fewer teams. Because there's no salary cap, Oakland can't compete. Cincinnati can't compete. Um, Tampa Bay can't compete. We need less teams. Tampa has acknowledged, can we do half the year here and half the year in Canada? And yet baseball is going to expand. I used to live in Portland. That's one of the cities. Portland's not a major league baseball.